There will probably be just one like this on there, meaning of this form. What form is this? That's factored form. So, again, if it was me, I would be reading the heck out of my notes this week. So I know where stuff is, I know what's in there. I mean, ideally, you read them enough to not need them. But if you don't quite get there, at least read them enough to know what stuff is in there and how to find it. So for me, you can see me skipping all this early stuff because I know that factored form is not part of it. And so I'm, this would be like me flipping pages in my notebook. And somewhere in here, uh, looks like there's standard form. Okay, and then I, I can see the factoring and I know solving came after that and then oh there's factor forms. Okay? So I know that I the problem this problem is in factored form. So I should be looking at my notes on factored form. Okay. So it says P comma zero and Q comma zero are uh, the intercepts, yeah. Yeah, just come on up and grab a piece. So I'm going to start there for this one since that's the easy information given. Might as well start with it. So X intercepts are at P and Q. Well, we need to kind of go find those. So X minus 9 equals 0 and 5X plus 2 equals zero. So we have nine, and let's go ahead and solve this other side. So minus two, five x equals negative two over five. So we have negative two fifths. So x equals nine, and negative two fifths are the intercepts. Now we need to go put those on the graph. So nine, and negative two fifths is like not quite a half. So just put your dot there in the middle. Okay. We have no clue right now. I mean, we should have a clue, but just by the intercepts, we don't know if this opens up or down. So in other words, it could go like this or like that. But we just do a quick glance at our equation, and we should know that it opens which direction. In other words, what is A? It's positive. So again, go back to your notes. A was out front. So it's A and then this stuff. So in ours, there's no number out there. And both of these X terms are positive. So A has to be positive, right? So it will be opening up. And because there's no negative sign, um, I mean, we, we kind of, I'm not going to sketch the actual graph, but we know it's going to open something like that. So let's go figure out some more information. What would you do next after the easy thing, which was the intercepts? What would you do next? Okay, he said find the axis of symmetry. I'm going to combine that with the vertex. So to find the vertex in factored form, what do we do? I don't think we wrote this. Let's see. We could convert it to standard, but that's kind of a lot of work that we don't need to do. Solving. Yeah. All right. So you know what? Let's add that to our notes. So this next round goes better to find the vertex in factored form. Average the x intercepts. Which means, because when we say average, you know that means add up and divide by two, right? Well, in this case, because there are two of them. so. Uh, we could do P plus Q divided by 2. Uh, I'm going to rewrite that. Just I wanted room to write the X coordinate. So X vertex 
equals P plus Q divided by 2. And then how do we find the Y coordinate? Just like we always do. Plug X back into the function. Okay. So we're going to go average 9 and negative 5 halves. That's where our x coordinate will be. Everybody good on that little note? Okay. So vertex x vertex is P plus Q divided by 2, which in this case is 9 plus negative 5 halves over 2. Um, you guys, I put my dot in the wrong spot. Oh, no, I'm not. I didn't. I wrote 5 halves. That's what I did wrong. I knew something was off. Should be negative 2 fifths. Sorry about that. Okay, and this is going to be roughly like 4.6 or so, but... 4.4, .4, I guess, would be more likely. Go put that on that axis of symmetry, your AOS. X equals roughly 4.4. .4. If we go put that on our graph, let's see if it makes sense. Remember, it should be the symmetry point between those intercepts. Does it look like it is? Yeah, when you're graphing on an actual coordinate grid, then things should look like they should, like the axis of symmetry should be in the middle. All right, and then our y-coordinate. Oh, that's cool. I think I'm going to leave that. y-coordinate is going to be 4.4 .4 minus 9 times 5 times 4.4 .4 plus 2. And I would just plug that into a calculator. Remember on the no graphing calculator part, you can still use a regular calculator. So you don't mess up stuff like this. So 4.4 4 minus 9 times 5 times 4.4 4. Plus two. So negative one ten point four. Is that okay? Let's see. Negative one ten point four would put it way, way, way down there. But at least it's down there and it means that it's opening up, right? It confirms what we thought. But is it okay that it's so far down there? Yeah, it, it is, guys. Why? What is A? If we, if we expanded this out, what is A? A is not 1. It's, we said a bit ago that it's positive, but it's not 1. What is A? Yeah. It's 5. It's 5, right? Look, if we multiply this, we're going to get 5x squared. <coughs> so A is 5. So this is what kind of a transformation with A being back? It's a vertical stretch, like major, right? So even though on this graph it kind of looks like it's compressed, but our vertex is way down there. And so it's definitely um, stretched out. In fact, just for fun, let's go graph it. It's okay to graph in factored form, and
and it will still give you a good result. So x minus 9 and 5x plus 2. So you can see how, com how stretched out this is. Uh, window, let's go zoom standard for now. Okay, let's try zoom fit. Uh, that makes it look weird. That's why I don't like that one. Hmm. Anyway, that didn't work out as well as I'd hoped, but... Look at it, set the zoom fit, the Y max is 912. <laughs> that's random. Yeah, that's a weird command on that calculator. Alright, we got that. I'm not going to graph our vertex because it's too far down there, but what's the next thing that you would like to calculate? How about Y intercept? Anybody know how to do that in, in factored form? Good. Plug 0 in for x. So in this case, we go 0 minus 9 times 5 times 0 plus 2. So this works out to negative 9 times 2, which is negative 18. Okay? <clears throat> that one, we could approximate negative 18 roughly down here, reflect it across. Okay? How about domain? What's the domain for this? Alright, I'll just tell you since nobody wants to talk today. So negative infinity to infinity range. We have to start at our vertex and give the y values from bottom to top, so negative 110, whatever the decimal was, uh, 0.4, up to infinity, it's going forever. Bracket on the 110. Okay, intervals of increase. Since this is opening up, it starts at the vertex and goes to infinity, so the vertex was roughly 4.4. Decrease starts at negative infinity and goes to the vertex. So those, unless you have lots of things going on for parabolas, those should butt up against each other, right? Like the decrease stops where the increase starts or vice versa, depending which way it opens. Okay, positive, those are the intercepts. That's what controls the positive negative. So negative infinity to uh, negative two fifths and 9 to infinity. So back up here, it's positive all up here until it hits that intercept, negative all down in there until it hits the 9 intercept, and then it's positive again. Okay, and then it's um, negative in between those two. So negative 2 fifths to 9. Notice we didn't even have to look at the graph, right? If you can get to a point where you can do that just based on the numbers, you're good for this test coming up. If you're still like looking at this completely lost, you're in a bad place right now. And you need to come talk to me for help. Or ask questions right now instead of just watching me do it. Okay. Those are the key features that you need to be able to do. From Friday, we talked about two reasons to use completing the square. Number one, we're going to use it as a method to solve. And number two, to write things, write equations in vertex form. So we'll do both. Converting, solving. Two things. Let me show you our two examples. I'll show you the better one. For Oh, you know what? Because of that whole power thing, I lost it. So uh, we don't actually have that. I don't have that. But I believe it was this one. Can you look?
Yeah. Okay. So remember the goal was to, let's just do a quick verbal review. The goal was to make this part, the AX squared and BX part, a perfect square so that we can rewrite it like this as a binomial of those two terms squared. And you can kind of see if, if we continue to write this, that that would be, that's how come we can write it in vertex form once we have done that. Okay? So it's either going to be in vertex form, or if we leave k over there, we can square root, square root, and now we can solve. So it does both. It just depends which stopping point you are after. Okay. So the way we did that was, let me quickly walk through this one, was to get the c term on the other side. And to make this a perfect square trinomial, we had to add that third term in there. Again, here's why. Anytime you have this, this is just a made up illustration, it's not related to the problem. Anytime you have a binomial squared, you get x squared, or maybe there's a term out front. And then we get plus 3x plus 3x from multiplying the outers and inners plus 9. So we get that squared. And then when we combine our middle terms, we get here. So if we're going to, if we want to get something that is a binomial, remember, two terms, if we want to get that squared, we have to have a, a C term. We can't skip that. Right now, all we have is an AX squared and a BX term. No C term. Okay? The C term can't be 11 because it doesn't match with what we're trying to do. Does that make sense? It won't make a nice, pretty, perfect square. So we kick it off and make up our own. That's the goal here, or the idea. Kick off the, the junky one that doesn't work and make up our own that does. Well, the way that is going to be, what we need to write there to make it work is B, let me write it out is b over 2 squared. So look here. b was 6. b over 2 is 3. 3 squared is 9. So this is b over 2 squared. That term right there. Okay? And that's going to be true every time. That was how we ended up. <coughs> is that every time you do completing the square, you're going to write in that space, you're going to write b over 2 squared. Okay? So what that became was negative 3, and we needed to do it to the other side so that everything was balanced. That those rules still apply. Okay? And then it ends up looking like this. 11 plus 9 is 20. So this can be factored, Tyler asked that question, to x minus 3 squared. So that is our goal. It's to be able to get to a perfect square. That's why we call it completing the square. We had to complete it by adding a term that makes it so. Okay. So we're at x minus 3 squared equals 20. Again, from this point, if I say solve, you're going to square root both sides. If I say vertex form, then you're just going to bring the 20 back over and get x minus 3 squared minus 20. Okay? So it just depends which end point you want to get to. Do you want to solve or do you want vertex form? But you can do both. So, that was a review of the problem we did on Friday. Big idea, again, would be two things in here. I'll highlight them. Let's use this. What do we add to make a perfect square? And then how do we rewrite it after doing so? Okay? And both of those are prescriptive, meaning it's the same way every time. Okay? So, questions on the process and the goal. Okay.
Grab your notes. Let's write them down. Uh, okay. So I'm just handing out sheets, not whole packets. Okay. I think one sheet will probably get you through. Yeah. What we have left. Let me pack that back. So for me, this is going to come after the simplifying complex fraction stuff, but you can put it where it works best for you. <clears throat> so to solve or to convert to vertex form. I'm going to try to maximize space here. So move C over if it's present. This, that probably is a little big. To other side of the equal sign. Um, by the way, this we, we won't be doing this from factored form, only standard. So put, I guess up here by process, put from standard form given. If you come across a problem where it's in factored form, then make it standard form first, but there's really no need for that. Because if you're in factored form, you can solve. You don't need to worry about completing the square. So you can solve for the intercepts really easily, and you can solve for the vertex. So. Don't do this if you're in factored form. You don't need to. Uh, move C over to the other side of the equation of the equality of the equal sign. Okay. Step two. You're going to add B over two squared to both sides. So you need to be good at knowing what B is. Don't forget to do it to both sides to keep it equal and make sure the equation stays true. Okay, I'm going to add this phrase. This is actually what completes the square. is adding b over 2 squared to both sides. Guys, okay, sometimes that's going to mean you have a fraction. So think about if b is odd, any odd number divided by 2 is going to give you a fraction, right? So if b is odd, you're going to be in, you're going to be adding a squared fraction, which will stay a fraction to both sides. Okay? Step three, <clears throat> uh, 
factor to simplify to x and I'm going to say plus b over 2 squared. That will be the same every time. Keeping in mind that if b is negative, this is going to say x plus negative, or x minus, okay? And, and then also in that same step, I'm going to put a period. Actually, let's divide it up into steps. That way we don't skip one. Combine c with b over 2 squared on the other side. Okay. So from this point, we have to split, depending what our goal is. Okay. So on, let me give myself room. On one side, we're going to say to solve. Step five would be to square root both sides. And just as another reminder, I think this is the third time that we've written this, don't forget plus and minus. Like, don't forget to add and subtract. Okay. Then get x by itself. So that means you would have to add or subtract h. Okay. And then final step, don't forget to complete in a second, yeah. Don't forget to complete the adding and subtracting operation. And I don't know how far you need, is that good? Okay. You'll see what I mean in a second, but We've seen it. When it says plus or minus, that means add the thing and subtract the thing. And those are two separate operations that you have to do to complete your solution. Okay? All right. The other option is vertex form. everybody pretty much here? Okay. So to go to vertex form, this fifth step would be uh, I don't know how I'm going to say this. Add. Sorry, don't write that yet. C plus B over 2 squared. In the last step we just finished combining that. becomes k, so add or subtract whichever it is, add or subtract, no. So you're just going to add to get it off and bring it to the other side to get x minus h squared 
and then close it. So you should have this already written from step three. Now you're just bringing k over with it. Don't forget your y equals. Or f of x, okay? Either one. Whichever one you started with, you should continue to use. Now, notice what's missing. Does anybody notice what's missing? From vertex form, what's missing? That last... A, okay. So technically, we would have an A here. But at this level, we're not going to do ones where A is not 1. Um, for completing the square, it complicates the process a lot. Okay? And what ends up happening is almost always you'll end up with a fraction that you have to multiply multiples of, or add multiples of, and it just gets kind of messy. So we've kind of decided that in Algebra 2, we're just going to stick with A as 1, okay? So you won't have an A value out there. Just understand completing the square works in all cases, even if A is not 1. So you will run across that, potentially. Does anybody going on to pre-calc? Then you probably will come across that, okay? And if you want to talk about how, how it works when A is not 1, you can. Okay. All right, so let's... Let's uh, go do one. Please keep those notes and, and use them as we walk through this so you can see how they'll be helpful to you as we uh, get into this. Okay. We're going to, even though it just says in the form, we're, we're going to do both. Okay. So here's what I want you to do. Uh, we're not doing this. We're going to solve and write in vertex 1. So go ahead and write this in your notebook, please. No, I didn't finish that. Vertex form. Go ahead and write that example in your notebook. You don't... Okay, so we're going to do the, the whole thing together, but again, I want you to follow your notes so you can see what you'll be doing. Okay, so now that you've written out the process. So, first thing we're going to do is move that 5 over. That was step one. Get C on the other side. So x squared plus 8x equals negative 5. Now we're going to complete the square. So step two looks like this. Now let's actually leave the color. That's not the same. Leave space there. That's where you're going to put b over 2 squared. And then remember, we have to add it to both sides. So b over 2 squared, first, we'll just write it out that way. I wouldn't even worry about simplifying it in this step. Just write b, which is 8, over 2 squared. And of course, both sides need it. So looks like that. OK, next line, we have x squared plus 8x. Well, 8 divided by 2 squared is what? Whole thing squared. 16, exactly. Okay? So plus 16, plus 16 on both sides. Okay, so this was step 2. We added b over 2 squared. And it's okay to say added because when we square something, it's always positive. So you will always add in that step. Even if b is negative, it still becomes positive. Okay, next step, uh, step three. We're going to factor this to x. And then this, this step could change because remember we're putting in b over 2 here. So if b was negative, we would need to say it. But just say x plus, in this case, what is b over 2? Not b over 2 squared, just b over 2. It's 4. So x plus 4, whole thing squared, right? The whole thing gets squared. Basically, to get from this line to this line, we factored. 
That's what we did. This is a perfect square trinomial. So we factor it. It just happens that it works out the same every time. Okay. On the other side, we combine negative 5 and 16, and we get 11. Okay. To solve this, what does step 5 say on that side? On the solving side, what does it say? It doesn't say. Oh, that. that's correct. Yeah. Square root both yep. sides. Yep. It says square root. So let's do it just like how we did in our notes. So over here to solve, basically, I don't want you to just follow a recipe. I want you to get what's going on. If we're solving, we need to get this x by itself. So we need to get it out of the parentheses, which means we need to square root. There's no reason to bring the 11 over to just bring it back to the other side to solve. So we might as well just leave it where it is. And it's going to look like square root of x plus 4 whole thing squared equals square root of 11. Which hopefully you know that square root of 11 is nasty. It's like an ugly irrational number. So leave it that way. Don't turn it into a decimal. Not at this point. Okay, next step. What is the square root of x plus 4 squared? It's just x plus 4. Okay, and then over here we get positive or negative. In fact, let's write that symbol. Positive or negative square root of 11. Or plus or minus would be a better way to say that. Okay, in our notes, the next step says, then get x by itself. Well... That means we have to get rid of this 4. How do we do that? Yeah, just subtract it off. But the last step says, be careful, you do need to do the operation, meaning this. We need to write it as minus 4 plus the square root of 11, and minus 4 minus the square root of 11. Okay? Write it out both ways. Did you write it? as x equals positive or negative square root of 11 minus 4? So, so he's asking this. Could we write it? Let me zoom or bring this up. Could we write it as this? It's, it is correct to write it that way. Here's what I don't want to happen. If I ask you to go graph this, or let's say it's an in-context problem, meaning... We just shot a rocket and we wonder how, where it will hit the ground. You have to do the actual addition and subtraction. So I just don't want that to get lost. Yes, it's correct. Just don't get that, let that get lost. Okay, so that's solving. We just figured it out. This was not a factorable equation. Our x-intercepts are really kind of ugly. You know, it's... If we think of graphing, this would be 1, 2, 3, 4. It would be negative 4 would be our axis of symmetry. And we are subtracting square root of 11, which is roughly like 3.3 .3 or so. So we're down here someplace. And adding square root of 11 somewhere over here. Okay? So we're looking at being able to find those x-intercepts. Even though it wasn't factorable and it wasn't square rootable. We just solved it. Make sense? So if you, if you have a problem given to you that says solve, and you can't factor and you can't square root, this is an option. Good? Okay. If the direction said to write it in vertex form, which they will, we're basically there. We just need to move this 11 to the left and get it onto the other side. So let me rewrite what we have. So it's all obvious. X plus 4 squared equals 11. We just need to subtract the 11 from both sides. And don't forget to put f of x or y, either one. X plus 4 squared minus 11. 
Now tell me where the vertex is based on vertex form. Negative 4, negative 11. Okay, so on that little sketch that I did, negative 4, our vertex is there, but our, our x coordinate is, but our y coordinate is down a ways, right? So it would be down here someplace at negative 4, negative 11, opening up, a is 1, everything from there goes pretty good. Okay? So vertex form should be pretty easy. Just once you have the square completed, move what would be k over and you're done. Solving is just a little bit more work, but not horrible. Ready to try this? Give it a shot on one, okay? So it's, the directions are cut off, but I do want you to do both. So solve and write in vertex form. What do you think? How so we need to get the three off to the other side. And uh, you guys, you do how, however you like, but you probably notice that I always like to keep the x squares and the x's on the left side. That's not because it's supposed to be that way or has to, it just is how I like it. So if you're fine with this being flipped around, that's also fine with me. So next step is to add uh, b over 2a squared to both sides. So plus negative 2. I said b over 2a, I meant b over 2. Sorry about that. So negative 2 over 2 squared. And Add it to both sides. Again, I would write it out this way first so that you aren't trying to do too much in your head. Okay? So write out negative 2 over 2 to start. Then go ahead and simplify that this actually means <coughs> negative 1 plus negative 1 squared. And over here, negative 3 plus negative. There we go. Plus negative 1 squared. Okay? So write it out, the whole formula, if you want to call it that first, then start simplifying. I think it will save you. Um, next, this can now be factored. Let me write it, though, first. Remember that when we square negative 1, it actually becomes positive 1. So over here, negative 3 plus 1. Okay, so if I handed you this and said factor it with the star method, this trinomial on the left, if I said factor that with the star method, you would end up with x minus 1 squared. Okay, well, you would probably end up with x minus 1 times x minus 1, but that's x minus 1 squared. So remember that b over 2 goes here, and b over 2 was negative 2 over 2, which was negative 1. On the other side, we get negative 2. So to solve, how do we get rid of squared? In this case, I should say. And yeah, we square root, thank you. So let's show that, square root, square root, <clears throat> we'll get x minus 1 on the left, and the square root of negative 2 on the right, plus or minus. Okay, get x by itself, and we have to deal with this square root of negative 2, you don't want to leave it that way. So how do we deal with the square root of negative 2? Sorry, what? This is a good review. Square root of negative 2 is actually what? Yep. Plus or minus square root of 2i. So split this 
into square root of 2 times square root of negative 1 before you write the i. Okay, now we move the 1 over. And we'll get x equals 1 plus square root of 2i. And x equals 1 minus the square root of 2i. Now, what does that tell you about how this graph looks? The fact that we just got i should tell you some pretty important detail. Say that again, I think you're right. We don't have x-intercepts. So this must, <clears throat> we go back up, which way does it open? <coughs> Opens up. Now, if our vert, so our vertex better be above the x-axis, otherwise something is wrong. So that's a good check. So to vertex form, we just need to move the 2 to the left. And we'll get y or f of x equals x minus 1 squared plus 2. So where is our vertex? It's going Which it is above the x-axis. And it opens up, so it can't have x-intercepts. So all these things are kind of confirming each other, right? If you really start to look at the details, you'll know no, no real solutions means it better not cross the x-axis, which means my vertex is above the x-axis. All that goes together. How'd you do? Okay. All right, well, that's completing the square.